This is Ryan and Michelle, and welcome to the Celebrate Marriage Cast, where we hope to restore and reclaim godly marriages through honest and real conversations. Welcome to episode 48. Ryan, we are creeping up on a year. I'm so excited for that. And right off the bat here, Ryan, you look super handsome with your new haircut. Oh, thanks. Thanks. And a place that we can't say because they're not a sponsor, but maybe someday they will be. And then we'll tell you where he goes for his haircut. Absolutely. You look amazing. Thanks. Appreciate it. Welcome to our listener. We are so glad that you're joining us today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for working on your marriage, working on your relationship. And we're just so grateful for you. Uh, Without you, there wouldn't be a Celebrate Marriage cast. So you are so valuable and we just want to hear your feedback. We want to hear the changes, your wins, the stories. We want to be able to connect with the real people on the other end of the stereo, the other end of this device. We would love to hear from you. So please do that. We would love to, um, I keep saying love, but seriously, we would really like that. So let me tell you the number is 605 951 zero one one zero that is our celebrate marriage cast phone number um and then just share this continue to share with your friends because you truly never know what is on the other side of someone's social reel what's going on in their life and with each of these messages if there's something that you're like gosh that really like hit me and i think that this topic could potentially impact my friends go ahead and share that you never know whose marriage it will impact and uh the fruits of that so Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle, it's so great. And I, I'm just, I'm thinking of it as, as you're talking about, you know, impact. Um, I just had a story today, actually. This really funny story that I actually quoted okay. Tony Bohr. Oh, cool. Who's been on the show several times. Yeah, marriage, Counselor Tony. Marriage counselor, marriage and family counselor. Um, just I, like, I'm in a team meeting at work and I quoted him in his fighting fast analogy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just how important it is to, to, okay, talk about it. Let like, don't kind of beat around the bush as they say, you know, like, like, let's just talk about it, get it out, get it done. Yeah. You know? And so like, like a I, Buffalo going through the storm, like, let's just go get yeah, to the other side. Yeah. You know, and I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, man, yeah. Well, like, that's just great. That's just great advice. You know what I love is that a lot of the advice is applicable in other areas. A lot of it's leadership and development, and you can apply that outside of just your relationship with your spouse. So very cool. So I sent sent Tony a text today that I had quoted him. Awesome. That's amazing. I love (laughs) that. I love that so much. Right. Today, we are talking marriage myths. So we hope that this is more stuff that you are then prompted to talk about. But I think we have a really fun show ahead. It's going to be a lot of conversation, a lot of just fun stuff. You guys, I think it might get a little spicy. I just glanced at some of the thoughts that Ryan had here. And I was like, I don't really know where this is going, but we'll go along for the ride. Let's go for it. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. So Michelle, I just had like, you know, as, as... I don't know. I just found like some, some, you know, I just was thinking through some, some myths in regards to relationships that I've heard. And mm-hmm. I think we've okay. all heard. Like a myth buster. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. We're a couple myth busters. All right, let's do it. I like it. So the, the first one that I wanted to, to just kind of start us off with, because I think we've been told this tale so many times of this idea of happily ever after. Mm, the fairy tale. The fairy tale, right? Every Disney movie, right? Like you you meet Prince Charming and life is just <laughs> going to be amazing from that point on. Happily ever after. Yeah. What no. are what are your thoughts, Michelle, okay, on so this? Okay, so I wish I would have this is like a pop quiz. I should have done a little more research in advance because I feel like we've interviewed a handful of authors that have spoke on this, but here are, here are the takeaways. I think Robert Paul talked about this in his Nine Lies That Will Destroy Your Marriage. I'm pretty certain he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. But here's the thing. The second, maybe not the second, but probably the (laughs) day after you are married, you're going to have conflict. Like that is such... It's kind of a big heap of crock. It's just crock. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> heap of crock? I messed that I up. It's a that's crock. right, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> no. That's a crock. Yeah. I don't know. Crock of what? It's, it's not good, though. Do you know what? You guys know what happened today? So, two hours ago, two hours before the current time that we're sitting in this podcast studio. So, here's, here's the thing. 
oh my gosh, you guys, like this is just life, right? Yeah. This year, this year alone, mom, find out that she has cancer. And oh, by the way, it's stage four. Okay, that was this spring. Yep. That was March. Yep. May, we find out we have mold in our basement. We get a ton of water, peel back all the layers. We have mold, not good. End of May, I get rear-ended and still having repercussions from that accident has been a nightmare to deal with. And then in July, was it July? Yeah. Ryan, my dear sweet love, has a sucker injury. Yeah. Tori yeah. ACL, Tori yep. meniscus, meniscus in two spots. Yeah. Near ACL, have surgery next week. Yep. It's been nonstop. Yeah. So, yeah. so all that. And right. then it just right. feels like one thing after another, you know, like you came like keep up with like, oh my gosh, all these payments and things. Um, you get caught up with one. I'm like, yay, we paid off Ryan's broken leg from two years ago. And then like the next month, boom, ACL, huge, huge surgery, all that. Okay, all that to say there's constant stuff. For example, two hours ago, I was getting ready for this podcast and I look over, our dishwasher is making these crazy noises. It's popped open. There's some error message. So of course I ask Alexa, Alexa, what does this code mean on a Samsung dishwasher? It means that you have a broken hose. Mm. You're at work. Yeah can't get home very quickly because you have this thing on your leg. Um, yeah. So I'm on the phone trying to figure out how to disconnect a hose, how to get the wet vac to then suck all the water out of the hose without spilling out on our floor, trying to figure out how to turn off the right water pipe, trying to figure out then it still didn't shut off and the motor was just running and running and they can't come until tomorrow. So I figured out how to turn off the proper breaker, sucked up all the water, did all the stuff and I got it triaged until tomorrow. But you guys, life is so stressful. I don't know what you have going on with your kids, your health, your job, your relationship, but happily ever after, I don't know that it exists. You can be happy, happy in all of it, but it's not all happy. And I think the key to a really great marriage is learning to be happy and uh, maybe holy, is that a word? I think Pastor Keith has talked about that. It's not about being happy, it's being about holy. But giving it to God and learning to be, uh, I don't know if content is the right word, but finding joy in the thick of it, right? It's not all gonna be happy, but can I still find humor in this crazy situation going on? Can we still be kind to each other? Can we still show love and respect and empathy for one another. Can we be happy in the midst of it? Absolutely. But it's not all going to be roses. Yeah. I spoke yeah. for a really long time. Yeah. But. No, I, I mean, I, I, I think Michelle, you, you hit it. Um, just in the fact that, that, I mean, happiness, happy ever after, like life is going to happen and it's not always going to be great, you know? And I, I think obviously like, we we can attest to this, you know, a lot of things have happened, but I, I, I think part of it is is gratitude. I think finding there are things in the midst of this that you can find mm -hmm. that that are good. And and I think, you know, also happiness is is fleeting. Sure. You know, I, I mean sure. like think of all the things that can that can disrupt that. I mean I'm just thinking, like, if I spilled my coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. I oh, I would be mad. Like, I wouldn't be happy about that, right? Yeah. But you know, that's a small thing. You know, I, I'm I'm thinking of more just, um, you know, really joy and and just I was just gonna say that you know, deep deep joy in who you are, who God created you to be, who you are as a spouse, as a parent all of those things and, and focusing on that and who God made you to be that it's not necessarily about catering, catering to my happiness every single day. I mean, it's just, it's just not reality. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But if you can have your joy, who that comes from the Lord, right? that's a different, yeah. that's a different story. Ryan in Nehemiah 8, 10, it says that um, it goes on to say, this is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's yeah. so many different scripture that talk about really where is the source of your joy coming from? Are you yeah. plugged into that? Are you starting your day that way? 
And I feel like that's why in all of these situations that we've been able to, even though it feels like, oh my gosh, how much can we bend before we break all these things? You guys have it too. And truly, Ryan and I don't talk about the toils and troubles often, probably really only here just because we want to be transparent and open and let you know that other people are going through real stuff too. Yeah. I yeah. think most anyone could say the same. They could probably yeah. list, you know, whether it's cars or, I mean, right. all the things, so right. many things. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we don't talk about it because it's not really, it's not really a focus. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think that's where, that's where gratitude comes in hmm. um, uh, of really just looking at, you know, looking at everything that happens and, and looking, you know, looking at it through a lens of gratitude and you're going to find it. You know, I think too is finding the silver linings and all of that. You know, for example, um, when you injured your knee, you got an upgrade for Delta Comfort Plus. So yay. Yeah, you know, absolutely. like what are what are those right. little silver yeah. moments, silver linings? When you got injured that night, our neighbors were there and um, because one of them plays on our team and the wife was there and she was like, you know what? I know a PT, let me call them. They came right to the field. Yeah. Blessings. Like Absolutely. God is still yeah. working. God is Absolutely. still good. God's still for you. And there are blessings along the way too. Yeah. So. so myth number one, busted. Busted. It's not always going to be happily ever after. But where's the source of your joy? All right. Myth number two, we never fight. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe it? I tried to say it really compelling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. We never you fight. Did. You oh, did. we never fight. Uh, yeah, that's not true. Um, but you know, Michelle, I, I think it instantly of, of, you know, we, we brought him up earlier. He's been on the show a few times. Tony Bohr mm -hmm. had, had mentioned he's, he's like, it's actually when somebody says that to me, like I get concerned. Sure. Because you have two people that are, you know, as, as you get married, you have two people that probably are drastically different. You and I are drastically different. There's going to be some conflict. Yeah. There's going to be some some fights that happen, and that's okay. You know, Tony in a previous episode talked about about friction and how actually like that's okay. I think I think really and he, you're rubbing your hands yeah. together, but just for people listening only, friction makes fire. Friction yeah. can cause some yeah. big things too. Not necessarily in a negative, but friction right. gets things going. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think where this lands, I instantly am just thinking of like, how are you doing it? Yes, you know, I mean, I think that is a very important, um, and very important part of this. I I think I think disagreement is okay. I think it's how you do it. Yeah, I think when you have two people wired differently, brought up differently living differently and they come together in one household, you're gonna have different preferences to say that you don't is probably just, you know, not even accurate, whether it's how you hang the toilet paper, which of course if the the over the top of the front is the correct way. Um, but things like things like that. I, I did not even realize this was a thing. Do you would just like put it on however. I would just literally like I it never had once crossed my mind. It's so hard to grab when it's going the underneath way. But I later later in life I found out that I think the reason some people do it is if they have a cat or something. That way they can't just paw it all the way and the whole roll is d like done. But I mean cats. Is, <laughs> cats. <laughs> Anyways. That's okay. Okay. You're going to disagree on something. Yeah. And I think, like you said, Ryan, is absolutely how you do it. And fight doesn't have to be like a big combative explosion. I think that would probably, again, be on the other unhealthy extreme. Yeah. So I would say we have a lot of moments where we don't see eye to eye. You could call it a, a fight, but yeah. it's not like we're being mean or cruel or fighting each other, boxing, you know, but we're just trying to seek understanding. We're asking yeah. questions. We're seeking understanding. We're trying to learn about the other, see see from their vantage point and come up with a maybe kind of compromise together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think how you approach a fight, a disagreement is so important. And I mean, I, I think if you can, if you can look at it as the issue, not the person, hmm. separate those two things. You know, and and realize again, we say this all the time, but it's been so um, 
changing for us when when we have that same team mentality of hey you and i are on the same team here we obviously want what's best for a relationship for each other there's this issue that we disagree on it's not me attacking you it's let's look at this issue and and i think i think that's the critical piece that that i i think as you can learn that that's so important yeah, and I think for each spouse to have a voice, I think maybe if people, they're saying, oh, we never fight, then just making sure are both parties really equally able to express themselves yeah, or absolutely. is one person kind of bulldozing over the other? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like we quote unquote fight a lot, but we have disagreements that would be categorized as, you know, a fight. Yeah. But has worked through in a healthy way. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Michelle, that's a, that's a, a great, I think a great point because I think in a lot of relationships, there tends to be a bulldozer and someone that shuts down. And I think of understanding even, even where you are in that process and, and having real understanding of, Hey, I'm the bulldozer mm. or Hey, I'm the one that typically shuts down. Like, having that understanding of where you fall, where your spouse falls and they're equally like, no. And to have that safe space. I, I that's such a great, that was such a great, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. So good. All right. Myth number two, we never fight. Not true. Busted. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ryan, right. you are you are in a mood today. I am, yeah. I'm sorry. We, I don't know, maybe they could even work this in. I ran out to grab um, my phone for some scripture and I came back. And what were you saying? I don't know. You were saying, uh, oh, something about the Bible. Brought to you by the best self-help book in, in the world, the Bible. Yeah. This week's episode brought to you by the Bible. Okay. Anyways, so. Maybe, sorry about that. No, I love it. I think yeah. it's actually leading up to really great, yeah. really great grand finale here with these questions. Yeah. All right. You were in your office too long today. I was. You didn't get to you didn't get to come home for lunch. I need that's some what it fresh was. Air. Yeah, that's you've been uh, boxed up too long. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Next myth. All right. Let's hear it. Comes from a popular movie, uh, from I don't know Jerry Maguire. The nineties, maybe. Hmm. Was it nineties, two thousands? I don't even Probably remember. 90s. Okay. This idea of you complete me. Mm. Tom Cruise. Was it Jerry Maguire? I think, yeah. I think it was Jerry Maguire. Yep. Tom Cruise. Did they say in a special way? Wasn't it like you complete me? I don't know. Did they do something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I've seen it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we hear this a lot, right? Oh, my spouse, they complete me. It sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Okay. Well, because we've done so many different interviews with people that have talked about the importance of self-development and self-leadership in your marriage, I feel like you do need to be your own whole person to bring the best in your marriage. If you're looking at your spouse to fill some void, it potentially could be a negative. It's my first thought. Yeah. I mean, I, I think... I, I think you're right. I, I think sometimes we put that pressure on a spouse to fill a void that is um, a, a godly void. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think we sometimes put our spouse on that pedestal and think that they're going to to do everything and change everything when when really that that's God. So good, Ryan. I think that's exactly where I was when when we met. I was on that journey because I realized that that's not going to work. Yeah, I had put so much focus on things of the world, both my bodily identity and relationships, where that was my identity was how I looked, who I was dating, but none of that worked. It failed miserably. So I had been on this journey with God came back and, you know, was like, God, this is not what you purpose and plan for me. I know I've been away. Here I am. So when I came to celebrate and um, I told you on one of our first dates that I 
needed this relationship to be based on Jesus because I'd done it my own way and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. But realizing that my identity comes from him, not from Ryan. Right. I love you with all my heart, but yeah. you can give me what God can. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think I think a better word for, for this is I think you compliment me. Sure. You know, I, I, I think I think that's maybe a better a better phrase to say, you know, because I think we complement each other really well. I love that. I even think you compound me. Think of your in finances, compound interest. I feel like you amplify me, but if we're sticking with the C words, like compound or I don't know, catapult in a way, like you oh, wow. you make me better. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, like compliment. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a great, you know, I, I think a lot of the things that I'm not great at, you are great at. And so like, um, I, I think of it more as complimenting when I, when I hear that. Yeah. But not in a way where you need it. Like I make it better, but you're yeah. fine. I, I don't know if I explained that right. Whereas like, you're not... You don't have a void in you that I needed to help you with. Right, right. But I accentuate like your giftings and I mean this podcast. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Using each other's skills and Absolutely. strengths. Yeah. You guys, Ryan actually does a lot of the concepting and writing for the show. And I kind of joke that I would just show up and, you know, add commentary. I do, but I do a lot of the, not administrative, but more uh, technical, I'm a keeper tracker. Keeper tracker. Yeah. That's a great. I like that. Not trapper keeper, but I'm a keeper trap tracker. I keep track of all the episodes, all the ideas. I make, I, once Ryan has the concept from his notebook for the show notes, I'll put that into our documents, all get them formatted, get them in our notebooks, yeah. which we we need new notebooks. They're busting at the seams. So yeah. I thought for one year, we need we need like nice celebrate marriage yeah. notebooks. Myth number three. You complete me. Busted. busted. <laughs> what do we have next? Okay. So myth number four, we like all of the same things. So what are your thoughts on that, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I... I, I think there's there's good and bad here. I, I mean, I, I think we we do have a lot of the same hobbies. Yeah, we really do. Um, where I think that's fun to be able to do things together. I don't think you necessarily have to. And and I think that's where like I wanted to to jump into this. It's okay if you have different hobbies. Part of I think that's what makes it fun is that, you know, Michelle, if you like to to play pickleball, you know. And I didn't, you know, I think that's a fun opportunity to, to learn or to watch or to, you know, take an interest in your hobby. Sure. You know, I, I think a lot about um, music and some of those things. We have very different music tastes, you know, where it's kind of a fun, like that's kind of what makes it fun is, is there are some differences. You don't have to be exactly the same. God didn't make you the same. You're very different. And I, I think that's part of, you know, learning to to embrace that mm-hmm. and to have fun with that. Um, again, it's okay to have some of the same things. I don't think you have to. And I think it's fun to go along for the ride and to experience that with you. It doesn't have to be that way. Maybe it's a hobby that you do with your friends then, but just remember to come back together. Don't get so isolated just doing all the different things. But I think it has opened us up to more things. I know that we've gone to some theatrical presentations that I wanted to go to. And Ryan, I don't know if you would have gone to those on your own, but we've seen some plays and we've done some things like that where one of us had an interest and the other was like, okay, yeah, let's go try that. That'd be fun. I'm game. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 I think it's fun. I, I mean, but, but I think understanding you don't have to have the same hobbies. You don't have to have the same interest. And and I think that that's where some people, I think, get hung up on this myth of like, we have to be the exact same person. 
mm-hmm. and do all the same things together. Sure. So you're saying the myth isn't necessarily that people say we like all the same things, is that they feel like they have to. Yeah, right. The myth would be yeah. we have to like the same things. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what makes it beautiful and different and, and exciting that yeah. you are different and you can learn and grow and springboard on those differences. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think of so many things that I would not have done on my own. Mm-hmm. I would not have gone, but you, you were interested in it. Yeah. You learned how to snowboard just so you could date me. Right. And, um, you learned really fast. Yeah. You learned how to play tennis and then you beat me on like one of our first dates. Yeah. So like, (laughs) don't do that. (laughs) But it's, it's fun. It's fun fun. to, to embrace those differences and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do all the same things. It's okay to be different. I like that. Embrace your differences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think we busted that myth? Yes. That you have to like all the same right. things? Yep. All right. Myth number four, you have to like all the same things. Busted. Busted. Right. You guys get ready for it. Okay, Michelle, we're on myth number five here. Okay. This is this is where it's going to get a little spicy Ooh. if if you want. But all I, right. I think it's very important. Okay. Um, and again, we're going to talk about a topic that... Um, it is more grown up in nature. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll give you an opportunity to to pause the show yeah. if, if it needs to. But uh, I want to jump into this because I think it's something that, that really needs to be talked about. Okay. Um, Here it comes. Yeah. This, what do you have? This myth that marriage sex is boring. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Do you want to start or oh do you want gosh. me to start? Uh, well, I think that one of the really beautiful things for us is that the more that you know intimately your partner, the better the communication. And I feel like the better the needs can be met. Yeah. If I can say it in that way. I just feel like you know me so well and you're so kind and so tender and you're a really great partner. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. You're a great love. Yeah. You're a great love and lover. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ooh, spicy. Okay. What do you think, Ryan? This right. is, you You put this on yeah, here. I, 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 I was put brave this in to there go first. Because you were, because I think it's, I think it's very important to talk about. And, and I think, you know, we've talked about sex a lot um, through different shows. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, and Debbie Wade has some great episodes and the Kimberleens. Yeah. And and you know, we understand this is a this is a complex topic. And we understand that there are certain instances where I, I think um you know can hinder this. We we fully understand mm-hmm. that. And and if that's the case, you know, uh, again we would we would encourage you to to seek, you know, help seek you know, th- those things to, yeah, good word, to dig into this more. But yeah. I, I do really think that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be because, you know, as, as Michelle said, and, and I think this is so important that as you grow closer, your, your intimacy grows closer. Like you, you grow more connected. Mm-hmm. And, and really, if, if we look at this, tremendous gift that God gave us of sex. I think in that marriage relationship, it really grows Mm -hmm. because, because I know you, you know me, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I think this is where we've talked about it in the past. Communication is so important in regards to this topic and, and don't be embarrassed about it because it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. This is a beautiful thing that God created. Mm-hmm. And I think the Yeah, more, God didn't want it to be boring. Right. He created it. And and I, I think of this in in this context that I can completely open myself up to to you. Yeah. And, and I think that brings on a whole nother level of intimacy because Agree. we're connecting obviously on a physical but on on other levels as well. And so this idea of of being boring, I it doesn't have to be. I, I I think you can fan that flame as much as as you want. Because like 
you're you and I are connected yeah. on so many other levels. And it, it just it brings this to me. The more we're together, I think the more I know you, the more that you know me. And it it actually makes it better. Yeah, agree. Agree. I totally agree. And I think that for us, I think that God really blessed us. We waited until we were married to have sex. And I feel like that blessing just continues because I feel like it's just gotten better and better. And I just want to encourage people that like God, things done God's way are just so rich. And I feel like the blessings just are abundant in that. Um, You know, because maybe someone could say, well, I'm, you know, with, you know, my partner outside of marriage this long and whatever. But I, I just feel like there's a special blessing and anointing on our relationship. We've strived to honor God. And I really feel like that's returned in such a deep, deep way. Um, on that note, I was thinking though, that if if you maybe haven't walked that path, that God is also a gracious God and a forgiving God. And it might be time that you and your partner need to ask and get on your knees and just have a repentant, broken heart and get before God and say, we didn't do this your way. And we are so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to, and we want your blessings on our relationship. Get right with God. I was talking to, um, Somebody today, they were actually um, going to be doing the, the message at Youth, Logan. And he was talking about the message is going to be on um, just having a repentant, sorrowful, kind of a, a heart of, uh, just a heart of repentance and seeing how much it breaks God's heart. And so it's really interesting. We're actually talking about that on the show today. And one of the things that he said is that sometimes people feel sorry about their sin, but as actually because they got caught. And I think if you think about your children in this way, are they really sorry that they, like this example he gave, What are they sorry they took the cookie from the cookie jar and that's why they're crying? Or are they sorry they got caught? Maybe it's that they got caught. Um, so in any any issue like that, it's really checking your heart and being like, am I really sorry that I, that I lived that way? And this is something that, I had to do in front of God, like, hey, I'm sorry, we are all sinners. And I just want you to know, like, I haven't lived your way, but I want to, and I want your blessing and I'm going to do it now. And then I did, you know, and got got my relationship with Jesus renewed. Um, we, We have a baptism coming up next month. That's a great time to ask for, for forgiveness, to be repentant and to to become washed new. Baptism is yeah. a great time. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to be doing that pot- potentially as a family. We've talked yeah. about that and just, um, just to show we're followers of Christ. It's yeah. just an outward symbol of an inward decision. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say that part. Yeah. No, I think that's great, Michelle. I, I think it's, I think that's, that's great. But I, 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 I think you know, it's it's one of the the greatest gifts that I think God gave husband and wife, and I I think that you can really make it that way where it's not boring when you when you get married, and 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 I think you can you can fan that flame into where it gets better. Yeah, because you're listening to your spouse, you're listening to each other, you're listening to their needs, um, and they're listening to yours. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I think that awkwardness can go out the window and you can just connect yeah. so deeply, so intimately on on all levels. And it just makes it so much better. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. It it is fun. To be with your love. That's right. What like what a gift. Absolutely. To yes. be able to truly be yourself with someone. Yeah. Absolutely. That is a that's a great. I think that's a great point, Michelle. And I think also too, I guess I just wonder why people would say this. I don't know, you know, that, oh, married sex is boring. Maybe it's also just keeping it a priority and making time, not necessarily like scheduling it, but don't forget about your partner and the busyness of being a parent. Don't forget about your spouse. 
Because I think that when you do connect intimately, it's such a great reset. And I I feel like we always feel even more so like we're on the same team yeah. after an intimate moment. It's like, yeah. it's just like a renewal of that. It's a renewal almost of our vows every time that two becoming one, we're, we're renewed, we're on the same team, we're together, let's go do this. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Michelle, because it's it's maybe different. It's maybe different than what, um, y- you know, it, it's maybe not the, you know, uh, you know, typical, I, I think the, what, what the world tells you sex is this, you know, night out on the town and then you come back and like, you know, it'll just be real. Like, Oh, you make love for hours at a time. Like, you know what? You got two kids begging on the door. It might be five <laughs> minutes, whatever you got. Like it, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it rich of like, Hey, we're still like, this is still a priority for us. Right. Like, Hey, we're still husband and wife. This is a great gift. Yeah. It may be different than what, than what everyone tells you is expected. And our kids need us to be on the same team and connected and one, because the better our relationship is, the better it is for them. Absolutely. So, yeah. So myth number five, was that five? Five. Yep. Marriage sex is boring. Busted. Busted. Ryan, that was fun. That was fun. I loved that show. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. We just had to reset the camera. This is really fun, you guys, because our, um, we call him the co-captain, Patrick. He came in and he said, you guys, you only have 10 minutes. You got to wrap this up. And we said, oh my gosh, no, we have a good topic coming up. We're going to get to the sex question. And you know what? He just came in and checked and we had like way more time. Yeah. And I think the good Lord was yeah, listening to it. Right. was like, I can't cut this off. Keep going, you guys. That's Get right. it. That's okay, right. So I think we have time for a mystery question. Mystery question. Are you going to sing a jingle, Ryan? No. Another one? Okay. No. All right, you guys. We are on a tight budget. Wondering if you have any good date ideas for no money or cheap. Oh, I love this question. Okay. This is great. So this is a user or user submitted question, a listener submitted question. Um, And you, you want to know you're on a tight budget, wondering if you have any good date ideas for no money or something that is cheap. You want to go first, Ryan? I have a lot of great ideas. Okay, good. But because my wheels are turning. So you fire away. I mean, I'll just, I'll just give a, give a couple. I, I mean, I think, I think any meal can be spiced up. You have to eat, right? Mm-hmm. I think any meal you make, you can have, you know, dim the lighting a little bit, play a little bit of dinner music or something. You, you put know, down some, paper. There used to be a restaurant in town where they laid down paper at this Italian yeah. restaurant and had a little jar of yeah. crayons on, on the um, table. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, or just put on like a nice tablecloth if you have one, you sure. know, something like that. Dim the lights, maybe, uh, maybe candlelight or something like that, you know, um, Make make your spouse's favorite meal. You know, you got to eat anyway. And I think you can instantly make any meal into a romantic dinner. Sure. At home. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I think that we've done this before. And I was trying to think of another episode to refer you to. I think anti-anti-Valentine's Day, we had a bunch of ideas, but... Um, I think some kind of a scavenger hunt would be really fun. So it could be coming up with clues and maybe it's just going around town where it's like, um, or or maybe it's just, hey, you know what? We're going to go downtown and do the sculpture walk. We're going to walk around and look at art pieces that are city installed. And at the end of it, we're going to get an ice cream cream cone. Yeah. Like that would be so fun. Um, There are some free museums in town. Mm -hmm. There are... I mean, the bike paths, getting a coffee and going and walking on your city's bike trail system would be super fun, I think. I don't know if you have kids or not, but maybe they could be biking up ahead while you guys are in the back, you know, talking with coffees. Um, So many people have said just to get your man side by side with you is such a great, great way to get them to open up. We do a lot of walking dates at night. Yeah. Yeah. Walking's free, you know, I think... I, you know, I mean, I I think of anything that, that, you know, I'm thinking of like the traditional date, if you will, of like, 
let's say it's dinner and a movie, right? You can create all of that at home. Sure. And spend very little money. Yeah. I think also looking for opportunities. I know we've gotten tickets. Somebody couldn't make a gala and they gave us tickets or just getting creative, looking for different events that your city has. Um, Yeah, or coupon books. We have a coupon book right now and a lot of the coupons are going to expire soon. So we're trying to use some of those up. But one of them, we walked to this soda shop and we have, it was like flavored seltzer water with some some you can create your own flavorings and that was kind of a a, a night out that was a family activity yeah. but it could be um yeah i mean i i say just just look at your community for for free events you know yeah. there's a lot of free music that's going on there's a lot of free a lot of free things that happen that you know i think it's if you can do it side by side with your spouse i mean that's yeah, that's I love a, it. that's a date right there yeah or even, we talked about this in the show, but pickleball or something where if you're sporty people, um, getting moving together too would be fun. Yeah. So absolutely awesome. Will you let us know what you do? We would love to hear that. And if our listeners have other ideas, feel free to put them in the comments as well. I'd love to hear. We'd love to hear those. So great question. And thank you to our listeners for joining us today. We have additional marriage resources at celebrate.church slash Sorry if I can talk, celebrate.church slash marriage. And our phone number again is 605-951-0110. You can text in a mystery question or let's see here. Yeah, we have a couple left in the jar, so we need more. So send them in or you can let us know your life change story, things that have happened because of the Celebrate Marriage Cast, how your relationship has improved. So we hope you have a great week. And we'll see you on Friday. Have a great week.